Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Alex and today we're going to talk about pagination in Spring Boot. When we build RESTful APIs, we usually expose collection resources. That could be products, books, users, you name it. And over time, there can be a lot of data in our databases. So if you have front end clients, it doesn't make sense for them to query all the data at once. Because for one, that is a lot of data that needs to be transmitted over the wire. And most likely your front end applications only show a portion of the data at any time anyway. So it makes sense for these clients to request slices instead of the whole collection. And this is achieved using pagination. And in this tutorial, I show you how to make it work. So let's code. I'm using the Spring Boot Starter Data JPI because we need to persist data and also need the pagination support from Spring Data. I'm using the Starter Web because we built a RESTful API. And I'm also using Flyway to manage migrations and the H2 database for persistence. So I've created one migration here, which is to create a table for the books. And a book has an ID, it's a Wardshaft 36. This is because I want to use UUIDs um, as the primary keys. A book has a title, it has an author. So in a, in a real world schema, you would probably have a foreign key to the actual author, but we just do it like this. And a book has a price. And this is what a book looks like. I created that earlier already. So you can see this is a plain JPA entity. We're using the table books. Um, ID and generated value is a UUID. And then we map the title, the author, the price, and we provide overrides for equals and hash code. So the first task is to create a little bit of data. So let's go into our application and start with a command line runner. So I'm gonna do this equals command line runner. And now we need to persist books, but there's no means of doing so at this point. So we need a repository and we create this first. I call this book repository, repository. Um, it's an interface, there we go. It's a repository. And we need some CRUD functionality. So we use CRUD repository for book and it's not string because I'm using UUID as the primary key. So this is what it looks like. And I have to bring in the UUID here. Now this should allow us to store some books. So let's store 100 of them. So I'm having a range here. That's for each. We need the index. And then we also need the repository so that we can actually store something. So we ask for this and then it's repo safe book apply. Now we can change everything in here. So the ID is a generator value, but I'm setting the title, I'm setting this to be book index. This author equals author index and this price equals index to big decimal. So I'm really just using the index here to create all these values, which are relevant for when we get to sorting the collections later on. So this should give us 100 books. And let's start with our REST controller. So this is the book controller. This is a REST controller, of course. And it has a request mapping for books. And here's our collection resource. It's a get mapping. So this is fun books. And we just do the basic implementation. So first of all, we of course need the repository here. So in a, in a bigger application, you might have a service layer in between. I just keep things simple and use the repository directly in the controller. So I could just invoke repo find all um, and that will return all the books. Let's actually run the application. So there are no errors, which is good. Let's go to the browser and check what we get here. So we can see this is the books resource and we're getting all of the books, right? We can see there we are 100 books have been generated. They all got a unique ID as we would expect. So nothing fancy in here, but this is the whole collection and 100 is still manageable. It could be way more, right? And what we want to make sure is that we only request a certain amount of books at any given time. And pagination allows us to slice data into individual pages that have a certain number of items. So we can page through them. We can tell Spring, give me the first page, give me the third page, and make sure that there are only 10 items at any given time. So this does the slicing, but we also need some meta information. We need to know how many pages do we actually have and this is important for clients to know because then they know to retrieve more data and they are also able to show users eventually 
a paginator showing them how many pages there are so users know how to browse the collection. And we get all of this out of the box using Spring Data. So let's go back. What we can do first is go to the repository and we also extend paging and sorting repository. So now we have two interfaces here. So this is also for book UUID. So if we check paging and sorting repository, we can see that it has two methods. It's find all that is expecting a sort parameter, but the one that we are interested in is this one. It says find all based on a pageable. And this will give us a page. So what is a pageable? A pageable has a few parameters that are interesting for us. The page that we are on, the size of the page, and potentially also a sort parameter if we want to sort by certain properties. Now going back, and what is a page? So a page is what we're gonna expose to our clients directly. This is the meta information that we need. How many pages do we have? Is the page empty? And this is what can be used by the clients to build the whole pagination flow in the UI. Now with this repository, what we can do is go back to our controller and just add a little bit more of code here. So let me refactor this slightly. Before we had um, an iterable, but what we now want to return is a page. Repo find all needs a pageable and we could construct this ourselves. Pageable is page request. So we have a builder in here of page number and page size. So it all starts with zero and we can ask for just five records and then paste the pageable here. But not just that, we could also provide sorting. So we could say sort by which property is it that we want to sort. So let's go with the title of the book and we want this descending. So we have to reverse order. So we're building this page request here. And now let's restart the application. If we go back to Chrome and then just refresh this here, we can see a few things have changed. So first of all, we only have five records here, which is what we wanted. We can see they are in this content array. So we have to get them from there. And we also have the meta information here about the pageable. So it says page size five. Is this the last page? No, there are 20 total pages and we are currently on the initial page. And while this works, we want to make sure that clients can specify these parameters using URL query parameters. So we go back, we stop this. And what we can do instead of building this ourselves here is we can pass it here as a pageable and Spring will inject a pageable based on what we specify in the client. So let's restart this again. It has started. Let's go to Chrome. And now if I hit the endpoint, so this is the default, you can see it returns 10 items per default. And we talk about changing this in a second. But what I can do now is request a specific page, page four, for example, you can see this has worked. We are on the fourth page and these are the records that are on that page. But now I can see, okay, there's still too many records. I just want two. So the parameter we're going to use is called size. So size is two. Now you can see there are just two records. And for the final piece, we also want to support sorting. Again, I'm trying to get the reverse order. Now you can see it says book nine and then book 10. And I want to make sure that we sort by title descending. So this is important um, because sorting is always applied to the entire collection in the database. So it doesn't just sort locally the records that we've seen here, but it does it on the whole collection, which is really what you want. So based on sorting, the content of the individual pages may change. And this can now be used by our clients to build up the pagination and request as many items as they actually want. Let me show you how to change the defaults on this one, because you've seen if I don't specify any parameters, we always start with page zero, which is the first page and with a result of 10. If you want to change that, you can go to your application properties and then using data like spring data web pageable default page size. So we could bump this up to 25. And if I start the application a final time, we can go back and then let me remove all of the parameters here. So we have the default again and we can see default is 25. I think this is super neat because it's so easy to set up and virtually any RESTful API needs that kind of functionality. So as usual, I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, just post them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.